Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston present Race Patrol! Transcribed high adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! Buzz and Happy are in the lower shaft of a secret mine on Saturn's sixth moon. As they wade through the water of the partly flooded shaft, a strange sound filters down through the mine. Happy, listen. Sounds like a motor of some kind. The mine's automatic pump. When the water reaches a certain level, it cuts on and draws off the water. But, Commander, look at the water level against the wall of the shaft. It's rising. You're right, Happy. That pipe isn't drawing water out. It's forcing it in. Someone reversed the pump. They're trying to drown us. We'll be back in just a moment with today's Space Patrol story, The Last Voyage of the Lonesome Lena. <laughs> Presenting the story of a young boy who didn't like any of the cereals his mom brought home. First, he'd say... I can't eat that stuff, Mom. Sometimes he'd say... Oh, gee, no flavor. And then again... Don't like it, Mom. I just don't like it. So she tried cereals in white packages, yellow packages, blue packages. But no luck. No flavor. Then one day she brought home a pair of cereals in red and white checkerboard packages. Wow, wee, that's good. Oh, boy. Hmm. That's what he said when he tasted one of them. Jumping Jupiter. Great day in the morning. This is it. That's what he said when he tasted the other. The cereals? Rice checks and wheat checks, gang. Man, oh man, they're my cereals. Buzz Corey cereals, too. The bite-sized super cereals that help to supercharge you. Best tasting cereals in the universe. And the only official ready-to-eat cereals of the Space Patrol. Fill her up, Mom. Rice checks. That's what our friend says now. Fill her up, Mom. Wheat checks. So, gang, if you want a cereal that's right on the beam for flavor, get the cereals in the red and white checkerboard packages. Rice checks. Wheat checks. Saturn's number six moon, Titan, has become increasingly important to the commerce of the outer planets. However, rumors of illegal activity on Titan have caused Commander Corey to send Tonga, his assistant security chief, to the Saturn satellite to investigate. Now, Buzz and Happy, aboard Space Patrol Battlecruiser Terra 5, headed for Titan are talking to Tonga by spaceophone, as she reports from the satellite's chief settlement, Titan Center. So you find that the chief black market items are processed foods and medical supplies, huh? That's right, Commander. What about those reports we received in the uranium mine? Was there anything to the sabotage rumors? Well, there was no actual sabotage, but about two weeks ago, a couple of men did try to get inside the guarded area. Were they captured? No, they got away. But there haven't been any recent incidents. Have you found out who's behind this black market food situation? No, but there's a lot of talk about a Captain Kruger. Captain Gustav Kruger? Yes, he's the one. He's quite a legend in this part of the solar system. I think I've heard of him, Commander. Isn't he that old-time space pilot who has the broken-down cargo ship? Yes, Happy. Lonesome Lena, he calls it. He's been shuttling back and forth between Saturn's moons for years. I've never heard of him being mixed up in anything dishonest. Who gave you this information? A man named Sherwin McCurdy, for one. He's behind a lot of this new development in Titan. Kruger has given McCurdy some trouble, but uh, I don't think McCurdy takes the old gentleman too seriously. Have you met Kruger? No, not yet. He just got back from Saturn. He's a Titan sent to spaceport repairing his ship. We'll have a talk with him when we land. Meet us at the spaceport and we'll go over together. Yes, sir. Corey out. Well, stand by for landing, Happy. Standing by, sir. Kill rockets. Rockets out. Hit repeller ray. Repeller ray on, sir. Now, let's button up the ship, and then we'll have a chat with Captain Kruger. So that's the lonesome Lena. Boy, that ship must be a hundred years old. Well, not quite happy, but it has seen a lot of service. It's so patched up. And look how it's pitted with meteor hits. Mm, Only a real space pilot could keep it in operation. Is that Kruger coming down the ladder? Yes. Captain Kruger! Oh, Captain Kruger! He looked right at us and then turned away. I told you he was independent. Let's get over there. He's checking the hatch. Well, 
Well, how's the ship, Captain? Mm. Good for another 50 billion GUs. With you handling it anyway. Remember me, Commander Corey? Yeah, I recognized you. This is my cadet, Happy. Very glad to know you, Captain. Ah. Have some callium seeds, cadet? Some what? Callium seeds. <laughs> Great unraveled orbits, Commander. Don't tell me this new crop of space cadets doesn't know what callium seeds are. Never heard of them, Captain. <laughs> Your education sure has been neglected. Well, they grow on Venus, Happy. They used to be very popular on space flights. Yeah, you never get space sickness if you chew callium seeds. Not only that, but they keep you from blacking out at high acceleration. Oh. And out in space, you never mind the absence of gravity as long as you chew callium seeds. As you can see, Happy, Captain Kruger is a pilot of the old school. He's the only pilot I know who still chews raw callium seeds. Yeah. People nowadays won't touch them. Just because they stain your hands purple when you crack them. Huh. Well, Commander, you didn't come over here for a lecture on callium seeds. What's on your mind? Oh, just a few questions about business. Ah, I see. I suppose you've heard rumors that I'm hijacking food and selling it on the black market. Is that it? There are a lot of rumors in Titan these days, Captain. Yeah, and a lot of upstarts. They come in here with shiny new ships and big ideas. They act like I don't belong. I'm getting shoved around, Commander. But I'm not going to take it. I never have. I'm not going to now. Well, now, if you'll excuse me, I got some repairs to make. Lonesome Lena's in pretty bad shape. All right, Captain. Come on, Happy. Let's find Tonga. You can tell them for me that if Sherwin McCurdy promised delivery, they'll get it. We're a little short of spaceships here on Titan right now. So... Hey, look, stall them off. Promise them anything. I'll call you back later. Come in. McCurdy, I want to work with you. Well, Captain Kruger, glad to see you. Put your hand back in your pocket, McCurdy. Why, what's the matter, Captain? You seem angry. Why wouldn't I be? For ten years, I've been setting the old lonesome Lena down on Titan any place I wanted, or on any moon in the Saturn system. Folks were mighty glad to see me whenever I rocketed in, until your crowd got here. My Proud, Captain? One of your hired flunkies just told me I can't set down on the Titan Center spaceport anymore. Oh, what kind of high-handed nonsense is that? It isn't nonsense, Captain. You can't put the Lonesome Lena down on this port. Well, that old bucket of bolts you call the Lonesome Lena is a menace. If I had my way, I'd report you to the Space Patrol. They'd melt up that old hulk. Oh, you would. You'd melt up a ship that has helped keep people alive for the last 40 years out here on these moons. Ship's out of date. It's served its purpose. Now it's finished. Who are you to decide whether the Lonesome Lena's finished? Why, one patch on that old battered hull is worth 10,000 of you. Melt her up, would you? I warn you, McCurdy, if you ever say that again, I'll slap you. Take space. your hands off me. Take your All right, hands Captain, off that's me. enough. Commander uh. Corey, this man attacked me. You got here just in time. What's the trouble here? I was merely pointing out that his spaceship violates Space Patrol safety regulations. That's a bald faced lie, McCurdy. The Lonesome Lena's safe as any ship in the space lane. Does it have repeller ray equipment? Well, no. Does but... it have infrared view scope equipment? I don't need it. I can land it blindfolded on any spaceport in the solar system. Does it have Class A radiation shielding on the space drive? Ah, her shielding's good enough. I ought to know I built it. I see, Commander. Obviously, he can't be permitted to land here at Titan Center. Those are regulations. Commander, I've always respected you. Are you going to side in with this planet lubber? I'm sorry, Captain Kruger, but I don't make the regulations. My job is to enforce them. There are thousands of people here in Titan Center. Their safety comes first. They're safer with Lonesome Lena than with half the amateur pilots in these new ships, and you know it. Captain, if we made an exception in your case, we'd have to do it for everyone. However, we won't be concerned if you have these safety devices installed. But that takes money, Commander. I haven't got it. I'll never be able to get it if I can't land here to load and unload freight. Well, perhaps you can work out some arrangements to land outside a ten-mile radius of Titan Center. Ten miles? Uh, might as well be ten DUs out in space. I'm sorry, Captain Kruger. There's nothing I can do. Uh, you and McCurdy, have some callium seeds. I won't be needing them anymore. Well... Huh. Captain is very dramatic, isn't he? I don't find it amusing, Mr. McCurdy. That old ship of his means more than his livelihood. It's his life. Oh, Commander, I wouldn't let my sympathies blind me to Captain Kruger's uh, sharp practices. What do you mean? Kruger's lived by his wits. He's been a lone wolf. 
Now he's up against the rules of society, and instead of abiding by the rules, he takes the attitude that everyone's against him. Watch him, Commander. I confess I'm rather afraid of what he might do. I'm here in Titan to prevent trouble, Mr. McCurdy. That's why I came to see you. I'd like to talk to you about conditions here. Of course. Sit down. All right, now, I just want to make an appointment. I have a few matters to talk over first with my assistant security chief, Tonga, back at our temporary headquarters. I see. How about later today? That'll be fine, Commander. I'll look forward to it. So the captain is really sore, huh? Yeah. In a way, I can't blame him. Oh, Tonga, did you tell the commander about the uranium mine? Uranium mine? Yes, the big one, halfway around Titan. Someone is planning to tap the mine. Dig into it from a natural cavern on the other side of the mountain so they can steal the ore or sabotage the mine. Who's behind this? I don't know. But I do know that some mining equipment has been hidden in the cavern. And I know the location. They are being very careful. The crust tunnel is being worked only when the cavern is on the night side of Titan. It's daylight there now. I think Happy and I ought to take a look at it. Do you want me to go too, Commander? No, you stay here in Titan Center. Call Sherwin McCurdy. Tell him I won't be able to keep that appointment. May not be back in time. There's the mouth of the cavern, sir. Uh-huh. There's been plenty of activity around here, too, by the looks of the ground. Yeah, there's a pipe leading from the cavern. A drainage pipe. Machinery right inside the cave. Looks like a pump. A pump? Apparently they have to keep pumping water out of the shaft inside the cavern. Get your atomic light hat. We'll have a look inside. Don't bump your head when you go through this opening, Happy. I wonder how close we are to the regular mine. It's hard to tell. Hey, we're in water over our ankles. Uh -huh. oh, the shaft can't go much farther. We must be halfway into the mountain by now. The water's getting deeper, sir. It's nearly up to my waist. Yeah. Listen. Sounds like a motor of some kind. Must be back outside the cabin. The automatic pump engine. When the water reaches a certain level, it cuts on and draws off the water. But, Commander, look at the water level against the wall of the shaft. It looks like it's rising. You're right, Hap. That pipe isn't drawing water out. It's forcing it in. Someone reversed the pumps. They know we're down here, and they're trying to drown us. back with Space Patrol in just a minute. They call him Whizzer, and there's not another boy in the neighborhood who can play basketball half as well. <laughs> What's your secret, Whizzer? No secret. I just get supercharged every morning. You mean you have a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal? You bet. Rice chicks, wheat chicks, or instant Ralston. That's how Buzz Corey gets supercharged. That's how I get supercharged. Say, how about those checks? They're plenty delicious, right? I'll say... And they're bite-sized. And they're the only cereals in the universe that have that modern bite-sized design. And there's only one cereal in the universe like Instant Ralston. I love it. That's the hot super cereal. Helps you to think fast, act fast. And play basketball fast. You said it. Instant Ralston is a cereal for winners and whizzers. That's what you are, a winner. How about you, gang? Wouldn't you like to be whizzer? Get supercharged. Eat a good breakfast with a checkerboard super cereal. Don't wait. Get them today. Rice checks, wheat checks, good hot Ralston. Buzz and Happy have entered a cavern on Titan, sixth moon of the planet Saturn, to investigate a hidden shaft that they believe leads to a uranium mine. After crawling through a narrow opening far under the ground, they suddenly noticed that the water in the bottom of the shaft seemed to be rising. Then they heard the sound of the pump echoing down from the cavern opening and realized that water was being deliberately pumped into the mine shaft to drown them. With the water up to their chests, they flashed their atomolites around them, searching for a way to escape. Hey, wait, Hap. Listen. I don't hear the pump anymore. Maybe it's been shut off. No. The water's still gushing in from that pipe. We don't hear the pump because the water is over the narrow opening. Well, then how are we going to get through? We'll dive under long enough to get to a place where the water doesn't fill the shaft. All set, Happy? Yes, sir. Dive deep. We made it. Yeah. Hey, the 
water's not even up to my hips here. We're on the upward slope of the shaft. Come on, Happy. Let's get out of this place. sign of a ship around here, sir, except ours. Whoever did this has certainly finished us off. I'd sure like to find out who it was. Happy. Look there on the ground. See what's scattered around the pump? Callium seeds. Right. Well, I guess we know who turned the pump on, sir. I've known Captain Kruger a long time. I can't imagine him doing a thing like this. Shall I pick up some of these seeds, sir, for evidence? Yes. Then let's get back to Titan Center. I don't understand it, Commander. I don't see how Kruger or anyone else knew that I told you about the secret mine. Well, he could have seen our ship headed that way and followed us in Lonesome Lena. Well, if he did, he must be working with a gang. While you were gone, something happened here. Oh? Some antibiotics were stolen. Several thousand credits worth. The worst part of it is they're urgently needed at a hospital in Saturn. There's an epidemic of Zeta virus in Saturn City. Well, can't they send medicine in from some other planet? Well, this particular antibiotic is made here in Titan. There is some on the other planets, but there isn't enough time to get it. And if a supply of the medicine isn't taken to Saturn very soon, the doctors say a lot of cases will prove fatal. Yeah, there must be some more of that medicine here on Titan. Maybe McCurdy can help us out. I've already talked to McCurdy. He said he's contacted every possible source. The thieves stole every bit of it and will now hold out for a fancy prize. Well, they won't have to hold out long. Commander, do you think Kruger's mixed up in this, too? We're going to find out, Happy. Let's find the lonesome Lena. Corey! Captain Kruger. I won't be persecuted. Not by the Space Patrol or anybody else. I'm getting a raw deal. And if you're as fair-minded as I think you are, you'll agree with me. Is the raw deal you're getting as bad as being nearly drowned in a flooded mine? Huh? What are you talking about? Show him the evidence, Happy. Yes, sir. Recognize these, Captain? Well, of course. They're callium seeds. We found them by the pump, Kruger. Pump? What pump? In the opening of the secret shaft near the uranium mines. I'm not interested in any uranium mines. I want justice. Commander, look what that McCurdy has done to me now. You see this paper? It's a doctor's order telling me I can't make any more commercial space flights. McCurdy has been trying to get the official doctors on me for months. We finally succeeded. They gave me a checkup, and I'm grounded. Let me see that. For six hours, they gave me tests. Heart, blood pressure, metabolism, the works. This is Dr. Greer's signature, all right? Yeah. But just read what he says. Captain Kruger's condition makes any further space flights extremely dangerous. As a space physician, I deem it inadvisable for Captain Kruger to be permitted to operate any commercial spacecraft for reasons of his own safety and the safety of others. Signed, Dr. Melvin Greer. What am I going to do now, Commander? I'll starve to death. I'd rather go quick, blasting off on a spaceship. Now just a minute, Captain. This physical examination must have taken several hours. I just told you it did. Then you couldn't have been at the mine. Mine? I haven't been near any mine. I haven't been anywhere but in a doctor's office getting needles stuck in me. And that isn't all. While the doc was working on me, there was a gang of inspectors checking over Lonesome Lena. Official space patrol inspectors? Yeah. That's another thing McCurdy's been trying to arrange for months. I admit I've been dodging inspection because I knew what they'd say. Me and Lonesome Lena were both out of commission. I'm sorry about that, Captain Kruger. Yeah, you're sorry. But you can be thankful for one thing. This examination clears you of suspicion. Someone has been trying very hard to implicate you in a serious crime. Well, that's not news to me, Commander. I have an idea who it might be. You mean McCurdy, sir? Uh, now, wait a minute. I know McCurdy has it in for me, but I'd say this for him. He tried to get Dr. Greer to postpone the physical examination. Oh, he did. After trying for months to bring it about. Yeah, but it didn't do any good. The doc said I was too slippery an old cuss to take chances with. So I was stuck. Happy. Tonga, we're going to find McCurdy. Captain, you stay around close in case I need you. Uh, don't worry, Commander. I won't be going anywhere. There he is, sir, uh, heading for that atmosphere ship. Oh, he certainly seems in a hurry. Tonga, wait here. Come on, Happy. Curdy, wait a minute. He's running for the ship, sir. But, Curdy, hold it. I want to talk to you. What is it, Commander? 
I've got a few questions I'd like to ask. Of course. We've just come from your office. From the looks of things, you'd left in a hurry. In fact, it looks as though you didn't intend to come back. Should that concern the Space Patrol, Commander? Possibly. Where were you going? I happen to have business at Torkland on the other side of Titan. Now, if you'll excuse me... Not until you explain that purple stain on your hands. What? That purple stain on your hands. Could it be from callium seeds? Callium seeds? Why, what would I be doing with callium seeds? Scattering them around a pump, maybe? That package you're holding, what's in it? This has gone far enough. Stand back and get your hands up. You ought to be quicker than that, McCurdy. Oh. Oh. Let go of that ray gun. That's it. Now, don't try anything like that again. Commander, this package he's got. Look at the label. Acro Laboratories, Titan Center, antibiotics. This must be the medicine that was to go to Saturn. Take it back to Tonga. We'll blast off for Saturn right away. You won't get off Titan in your ship, Corey. Why not? I put your controls out of commission so you couldn't follow me. And there isn't any other ship on the satellite except my atmosphere ship. And that won't take you there. I'm afraid he's right, Commander. You'll have to space a phone to Saturn for a ship to come and get us. Oh, but that will take hours. And the situation on Saturn is critical. Commander! Oh, yes, Captain. Well, I see you got McCurdy. Yes, and the medicine. Yeah, but McCurdy's wrecked our ship. There's no way to get off of Titan. Well, how about the lonesome Lena? Uh, but Lena's grounded. Ah, just a lot of official space jabber. She'll still fly. And by Jupiter, I'm taking you all to Saturn. You'd better let me take your ship, Captain, after what the doctor said. Uh, Commander, I know you're the best pilot in the solar system, but uh, Lena's sort of, well, temperamental. She's got a lot of quirks and things. If she isn't handled just right, well, uh, she just might go all to pieces. Are you sure you're willing to risk a blast off in Lena after what the doctor said? Commander, I'm safer in Lonesome Lena than anywhere in the universe. And let's go. Come on, McCurdy. We're taking you with us. Not in that pile of junk. It isn't safe. Get going. The ship's condemned. You have no right to endanger my life. Why, you low-frequency crook. As though your life was worth a allium seed. Let's go. Bring the medicine, Happy. All right, everybody. Sit tight. We're going to blast off. Look at those controls. Why, well, they're just patched together. Keep quiet, McCurdy. All right, Captain, when you're ready. Uh, wait, wait just a minute. i got a few more adjustments to make here. Like I said, Lena's temperamental. You sort of got a sense what to do. Oh, I admit I've never seen a control set up like this. Ah. Are you ready, everybody? Yes. All set. Let her go. And here we go. Excellent blast off, Captain. Yeah, just like I said. I, uh, Captain, what's wrong? My, my heart. Tonga, get the first aid kit if there is one. He's passed out. Now what are we going to do? Happy. Yes, Commander. Help me lift the captain out of the pilot seat. Yes, sir. There. Happy, you and Tonga see what you can do to make him comfortable. I'll take the lonesome Lena into Saturn. How you doing, Commander? All right, so far, Happy. We're two minutes out of Saturn City Spaceport. How's the captain? He seems to be coming out of it, sir. Congress trying to make him lie down back aft. He had me worried for a while. I hope he can take the landing. It'll be just as bad as the blast off with this antiquated equipment. Have you space phoned the hospital, sir? Yes. The chief physician says that if we get the medicine there in half an hour, we'll be in time. Oh, we can do that easy. Yes, I can land this hulk without crashing. Stand by for landing. Commander! Captain Kruger. I just couldn't make him stay in the bunk, Commander. Oh, I'm sorry I conked out on you, but oh, I see you got everything under control. Uh, do you think you can handle the landing, Commander, or do you want me to... I'd better take her in, Captain, in case you... Oh, sure, sure. But if I just might make a suggestion... But, but that's it, that's it! Thunder and Comets, Commander, you sure know how to handle Lonesome Lena. Here we go. Brace yourselves. That, that, that's it. That's it. You got it. You got it. We made it. Captain, are you all right? Oh, just fine. That was a great landing, Commander. I couldn't have done better myself. Say, you took that pretty well. Oh, I found some callium seeds back aft. Hmm. 
Nothing like them for space flying. You have some, Cadet? This time you've got a customer, Captain. I, I don't feel so well. <laughs> this is Commander Corey... And Marvin Miller... Reminding you that pulling up to your breakfast table... Is like pulling up to a filling station. Give him our example, Marvin. A jet cycle has just pulled into a filling station to get its tank filled. The man has it filled with ordinary fuel. Listen. Not much go in that jet cycle, is there? Now listen to the same jet cycle filled with super fuel. That cycle's flying like a rocket now because it's supercharged with super fuel. Same thing is true for you, gang. To get going in the morning, you need super fuel, too. So get supercharged the way space patrollers do. Eat a good breakfast with Instant Ralston, the hot super cereal. Instant Ralston helps you to think fast. And act fast. So remember, when you pull up to your breakfast table, it's just like pulling up to a filling station. You're there for fuel. Super fuel. So you can get supercharged. I'll take a tip. Eat a good breakfast with instant Ralston and get supercharged. Get it today in the red and white checkerboard package. Good hot Ralston. And now for a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol story. Buzz and Happy have gone to the offices of John Crozer to rescue a noted scientist abducted by Crozer. I know Professor Hegman is somewhere in this building, Crozer. Take us to him. Why, Commander... You're mistaken. Oh, no, we're not. Don't sit there under that sun lamp. Take me to Hegman. Well, all right, Corey. If you insist. Hey, my eyes. Turn that lamp off. Get him, Happy. I can't see. Uh, here's yours, cadet. Now, Corey, I'm going to finish you off permanently. Be sure to be with us next Saturday for the exciting story, The Brain Bank and the Space Binocular. When Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again bring you Space Patrol! And now, gang, here's a word from Cadet Happy. Boys and girls, this is Cadet Happy. Do you know how life-giving oxygen is carried to the cells of the body? By the bloodstream. So when a person loses a great deal of blood in an accident or in sickness, there's not enough blood left to do that job. Result? The person dies. So, will you help me save lives by joining the Space Patrol Blood Boosters? It's fun. It's patriotic. So, join the Space Patrol Blood Boosters today. Space Patrol, an original Mike Moser production, starring Ed Kemmer as Commander Corey and Lynn Osborne as Cadet Happy, was written by Lou Houston and directed by Larry Robertson. Other players were Marvin Miller, Nina Barra, and Norman Jolly. Don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present the new exciting Space Patrol! Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local newspaper for time and...